What's the name of the book? The Phaedrus, Plato Phaedrus. Christopher Rowe. Penguin. Books. Sean, you don't need one more for your friend. Oh, oh Sean's friend, huh? Yeah, okay, then. you're just kind of far. <coughs> I was hoping you had good far vision, you know. Yes. Is that what he's doing? Hmm. I'd like to see that. I could hold it. I mean, if one answers, it seems like it won't. <laughs> Interrupted you, go ahead. Well, oh, no, no, I was just saying it would be foolish to say, yes, Pierre, let us move on. When one can only, when I would only be approximating the yes, it would be kind of a... That's okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than a... Let's see if we can get confirmation. Okay. Brad, would you read that out loud? Yeah, sure. Would you say that the dynamics of love in relationships is analogous to that in the dynamics of see, seeking the nature of reality as usia? Hmm. It'd be the best answer. Is there another comment? Yeah, I said that. <clears throat> what? I, I said Brad, I think, would be the best to answer that. I don't, no, go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, I think Pierre, so. Can we substitute the word beauty in there? I would say yes. I would say yes. Could you read it? <laughs> well, I got. It. I would like to see it. And yes. I would say it's probably worse in this, uh, the dynamic of seeking the nature of reality. And we did not agree or, from last or, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll add.
either of them. Hmm. All right. I'm in. No idea. The last two lines. Are you voting, sir? Or? No, I just want to compliment you on your, as I read somewhere, yeah, and is it all relative? You're reconciling different parts of the speech into a splendid unity. Reconciling with is it all relative? <laughs> yeah, you, you talk about how to study a Platonic dialogue. And you speak well, go ahead. Reconciling different parts, its different parts into a splendid unity. I can see that type of structure in what you're doing right here. You're piecing the different parts of the speech together to form these questions in an illuminating way. Uh, okay, do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> and I think at the last time we met, wasn't there someone who was making a point about uh, justice? As I recall, I forget who it was, but, uh, there was some reference in the work to justice and they were going to be sure to be spokesmen in order to show its relevance in the dialogue of the favorites. Is that right, George? Did I recall it correctly? I forget who it was. Someone. That was you. <laughs> no, Nabuya. The memory is not as strong. It was me. Oh, it was you. I couldn't. <laughs> so you're the one who gave the. So you'll bus. you'll be responsible for that one. Fair enough. Go uh, next time, not today. Sure. See, so, um, how should we proceed if this statement can be made? Because it's rather interesting, isn't it? Right. So it, would it not mean something like this? Uh, <clears throat> assuming, assuming there is an approach. An anticipation. Um, the beloved. Or whatever you want. And whatever whatever is the, the suggested way of proceeding, it should be Being, and whatever, whatever would cause a problem here in the quest, even more so with that same approach, block, and therefore there should be therefore an ideal way to capture, as there must be an ideal way to capture and that similarity should be so close that we can say it is analogous. So that's why <laughs> for the, the relationship with the beloved, there's no physical contact, right? And that, I mean, there's no sexual, right? The, the, only the Aries fellow has sexual contact, but the, the philosopher of the lover doesn't. And so, also, for the brilliant light of being, it's, it's colorless, formless, and intangible. So if you're to approach, you have to approach both analogously, not expecting the brilliant light of being to have any tangibility or color or form. But 
let's get everybody in the same quote. Good quote, let's go there. Reference, please. Uh, 247C. Souls, do souls reach this? Do souls reach this peak experience? Do souls reach this peak experience? Uh, what is the role of, if there's a role for temperance here, how is it exhibited here, and why should there be such a similarity? Because he talks about that. But let's, let's get into the quote. Will you read the pertinent quote? Well, <clears throat> that the region above the heaven was never worldly sung by any earthly poet, nor will it ever be. It is, however, as I shall tell. For I must there speak the truth, especially as truth is my theme. For the colorless, formless, and intangible truly existing Messiah with which all true knowledge is concerned. So we have a connection there. Go ahead. Holds this region and holds this region and is visible only to the mind, the pilot of the soul. Now the divine Dianoia, since it is nurtured on mind and pure knowledge, and the intelligence of every soul which is capable of receiving that which befits it, rejoices in seeing reality for a space of time, and by gazing upon truth, is nourished and made happy, until the revolution brings it again to the same place. In the revolution it beholds absolute justice, temperance, and knowledge. Not such knowledge as has a beginning and varies, as it is associated with one or another of the things we call realities, but that which abides in the real, eternal, absolute. And in the same way it beholds and feeds upon the other eternal verities, after which, passing down again within the heaven, it goes home. And there the charioteer puts up the horses at the manger, and feeds them with ambrosia, and gives them nectar. Uh, so, Eternal verities could be translated as real beings, by the way. Taunta. Okay, what do we pull from that? That's confirming, yes or no? Come on, as you reflect upon it, what would you say? Could we use it? Yeah. Certainly makes a clear point with knowledge, does it not? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, um, you know the most difficult word, I'm putting down the most fundamental word in the whole game, is this word. Uh, likeness, because it also means there must always be its complement or its opposite, unlike. <coughs> so when we have here, it, it's analogous in seeking the nature of reality, see? Seeking. The quote we have is not merely seeking, but culminating in it. So I would have to change this, you see. Because the seeking just means this would be similar. <clears throat> but if we go on 
and say not just seeking, but also the achievement of it, then we have a different, a different, a different kind of exploration. Right? Agree? Yeah. So let's stick it in. But then we better be careful about this word. This could be analogous with seeking, but would it be analogous for seeking and its culminating or its achievement? Let's just call it achievement. Because that is meant to include whatever is inherent in the, ex in the totality of the experience. I know. Okay. <coughs> Pierre, I'm having a problem with the idea that we're talking about pursuing beauty, you know, and using the word love. Yet, in the text, it continually talks about reason understanding, yeah. and understanding, yeah. usia, yeah. which, as an English speaker, it divorces itself from the feelings of love. In my mind, when I read that text, and to me, they're you know intertwined because the reason without the feelings ha is like an engine without gasoline. Okay. No, but it looks like he's including the engine. Oh yes, yes. yes, yes. When I read the text, sometimes you know my mind goes. Is this just, you know, thinking alone? Well, it's the Western man. Watch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just wanted to check to see it. Yeah, just thinking. Okay. What about being nervous? Uh, if you don't mind, understanding? Yeah, the Osea part This is whole the... thing, this whole thing is introduced as a way of understanding. Right. By the way, in the understanding, there is a place for love, and certainly all of the dynamics of love. Okay. So yes, the whole thing is thinking in that sense of an understanding. This is this is offering a way of understanding. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me see if I can go back into the quote we just used, right, to make the point I'm making, just so that we're together. Can we go back into that quote? You see, in the earlier translations, I have an early one, <laughs> and they cut out this whole section, and therefore we don't have the problem except in your translation. It ends with, let me pick up the but, but that which abides in the real, eternal, absolute, and in the same way it beholds and, it, and feeds upon other eternal verities, and it stops there. And therefore what follows is not my translation, therefore, when yours cut it out with a razor or something, cast it into the flames, or it's important. So what would you say he's saying after that? Experience? Is there something that follows after this experience? Mm -hmm. You bring it around again. Why has to go home? Quick, take a look. After which, passing down again within the heaven, it goes home. Now watch, it's within the heaven. Yeah. It goes home. And there the charioteer puts up the horses in the manger and feeds them with ambrosia and nectar. Right, 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 right. So after this, 
when that happened, right, which is very important, is it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. See, now, if it were analogous in both levels, then in the complete we would expect from this sexual union of the beloved, right, there would then have to be something analogous to this. If it were analogous. Agreed? Yeah. There should be coming down. There should be some coming down. So therefore, it is not totally analogous unless we can see that there's something analogous to this, to this, strictly speaking. But for the seeking, it could be strictly analogous. Why did you say, I thought there was no sexual union between the lover and the beloved for the flood? No, I didn't. I didn't say there wasn't any, if that's what I understand you to mean. No, I thought there wasn't any because I thought that, that's what it said. I thought they hold on. No, no, I'm saying that if this is an achievement, this is an achievement. If it's strictly analogous. And if it's strictly analogous, then what follows from here must also follow here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What is the achievement for the love and beloved? What, what is the achievement? Yeah. I presume it would be a sexual union. Yeah. It's not the same in what in this, uh, what wasn't that the Aries. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with Aries yet because that's a that's a different a different section for a different purpose. Let's hold that back. Two scenarios. Yeah. The question is whether this is general before he goes specifically to the different gods. Right, so just in terms of analogies, would you agree this is still the analogy? Mm -hmm. And one might say, well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't fit Aries. I'll say, yeah, mm -hmm. curious. Uh-oh, got another hand. But shouldn't we look at, if we're going to see if this analogy works, shouldn't we be looking at how it works for not for the, not for the gods. Uh, that's the life of the gods. But for the other and souls, and souls, and souls, such is the life of the gods. But of the other souls, divine. Well, because uh, in their case, they're not putting their chariots down in in the heaven. Yeah, they're yeah. they're just raising them. By the way. Uh, I guess you're, you're asking whether or not this is a description that goes from 247A on. Does that include all the souls or the souls in their pursuit of that goal? I was only talking about the end part where they put the where the uh, divine intelligences put their uh, horses in the uh, in the manger in in the uh, heavens. But previously they didn't, like the pilot of the soul, the mind, the pilot of the soul, it holds this region and is visible only to the mind, the pilot of the soul, at 247C. So that could be even a human soul? I don't know what's this pilot of the soul. Okay. The mind. Also it says, uh, uh, where is it at? And whoever wishes and is able follows, for jealousy is excluded from the celestial band. But... That's not, I don't think that's clear. He doesn't say souls, but he says, uh, right. Then how come when the, how come later then they're just picking their, the head of the charioteer up into the outer region? That's annoying. Brad, you're still going? Um, I, I, I had this question earlier. Um, if souls are included in the section you're referencing. I don't but you figured it. But you figured it. Out. I don't, it's not clear to me. Oh. Yeah. 
it seems like um, he's including souls there um, in that section just because of that quote and then also the one Nibuya. So why would he, um, I, I guess that that's a different uh, level that those souls are, are, are at, right? The ones that are uh, sometimes rising and sometimes sinks. Because their horses are unruly. Well, they feed. They feed on. Those can only feed on what they are capable of feeding upon. Is what he's saying. So you only get what you put into it in a way. Okay. Is the question on the table on whether or not this fits only for the gods, or does it fit for the gods and souls? That's what right. I'm asking. Yeah. I just no, don't. It's no, not no, clear to no, me. No, no, no. And the point that Nibuya made. Remember. The point that Nibuya made is it that necessarily that, it involves the soul. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And therefore, what would that do to your point? That would clarify it a bit. Okay, but then we, the, no, then we can go on. Okay. Well, <laughs> still not. Barbara. Well, fair. I'm wondering whether it would help to ask the question, because there is the quote, which I think nobody was referring to, that the, the divine intelligence and the intelligence of every soul which is capable of receiving it, right? Okay. All right. There is that quote at... Um, 247d4, but I'm wondering if the line, such is the life of the gods, it may not refer to the whole of what precedes it. Gotcha. Okay. I'm wondering if... Cause, cause that it, would clear it up a lot. It would, depending on how you draw that line. Well, would it refer to then, if not the whole? It, yeah, let's make sure. It's the point you made. Well, I was wondering... It looks, would it, that looks like, does it not, there's the possibility for the soul then to gaze upon that for whatever length of time, and therefore it necessarily involves the soul, not just the gods. Seems a very, right, unambiguous statement, that all the, not just the divine, not but every divine. soul that's yeah. capable of receiving it, yeah. yeah. And even the section, such as the life of the gods, if we... Sure. If we got into that section, such as the life of the gods, it starts such such as the life of the gods. I think there's a lot in there also that also speaks to that very issue. Well, okay. okay. There's no reason why if it's in the life of the gods, it doesn't include what's going along with them. Thomas Taylor, a lot of times my questions, if I would just look at Thomas Taylor at first, I wouldn't have to uh, ask them. But in his, he's well, pretty just clear. Sure. Oh. Isn't that yeah. sentence that you're using include the idea of the souls? Read it, read it aloud. Such is the life of the gods, but of the other souls, that which best follows after God and is most like him, raises the head of the charioteer up into the outer region. So therefore, does that soul which is most like him end up experiencing that? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore? It's even in that First one sentence. Together. It's even in that one sentence. Okay. <clears throat> I was just saying, it was clearer in Thomas Taylor. And uh, a lot oh, of times please, my questions please, could, could be Taylor answered. Taylor. It. Well, as far as that, such is life of the gods, he does kind of play it that way. He just says, but with respect to other souls, such as follow divinity in the best manner and become similar to its nature. So he he does, he plays it that way. <clears throat> and he puts the, and this is the life of the gods in the, sort of in the previous paragraph. So it's not. Hmm. So it's not referring to that. It doesn't seem to be referring to that whole chunk, but just that end part. Ah, gotcha. Wait, what part are you saying? Such is In, the life of the gods. Is. Yeah, the such is the life of the gods was kind of throwing me off. That made me think that it was contrasting that whole chunk with now we're going to see the human souls. But um, it, he plays it that. Uh, Who plays it? Thomas Taylor, okay. yeah, he good. puts the, and this is the life of the gods, in that paragraph before this one. So then it just, it just refers, and this is the life of the gods, refers to just the, uh, uh, you know, the end of the, the last section, instead of the, the whole thing. Okay. Or could it refer that such is the life of the gods, <coughs> Meaning that the the other souls may not spend their life exactly right. It depends. Right. So that that sentence allows for a lot of. Can we work on any more? Wait, wait. Well, just to, I just want to try to take that issue a little deeper, right? I mean, the fact that there is this ambiguity doesn't it raise a deeper question about that that use that phrase? Like, if he's if he, such as the life of the gods, 
Like if he's talking about souls in the very previous paragraph, why does he say such as the life like of the air? Well, I'm just I, saying I got my mutt called Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> like he could have said what a heavy weight and burden upon my soul. And he could have said such is the life of the gods and the intelligence of every soul which is capable of receiving it, etc., etc. But he doesn't. No, but such is the life of the gods. A moment ago, he agreed it did. He must be seeing something new that brings him back to his former position. And you and I are wondering what that was. So, which of us should ask him? All right. I don't um, think you even have my question right now, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I think it's curious that he refers to something that souls can participate in as the life of the gods. Thank you. Okay. Also. Can we go on? Okay. Yes. Good. Still doesn't have it. Okay. <clears throat> Next up. I just have one quick. It seems that the, the paragraph that Danny pointed out would have stuck to your original question, the seeking. Mm -hmm. If we were to leave the, the achievement off, yeah. what follows after the life of the gods in yeah. the paragraph that, or the, the portion that Danny pointed out, that seems like it's describing the seeking with the trials and tribulations. No, 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 no. Okay, just a... Okay, we play. Well, it also, sorry, it, it, it also goes back to the question that in a way you raised the last week when you were saying the, uh, that the, contem the communion in which, uh, uh, right? Yes. The communion in those things, the, the contemplation, the communion in those things, the communion in which causes God to be, a, to be divine. Oh, yeah. This, well, right. because the then... The with which causes gods to be divine. Right. Yeah. So then if, if it really... Uh -huh. Then the, if one were in that kind of communion, then one would in that that be divine. Then it would be such as the life of the and gods. One right. one memory in the correct way... Then right. It's yeah, it's always. Sure. Right. Hmm. Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Concluded that is there some still some discussion of whether that whole paragraph is the life of the gods or is it just the last paragraph? It's more like such is the life of the gods. Like that's their whole the, lives, the, but their whole lives. But it but doesn't mean that it doesn't exclude those who are ready to participate in it. Right. Okay. Um, now the point that was just made is the seeking presupposes a method. Right? And the method is memory. Right? Basically memory. And that's what's so wonderful about the work. Why is that, Pierre? <laughs> Why is that so one that what does that make it so wonderful? Uh, uh, 249C. <laughs> Back to our great opening quote that we started with some two weeks ago or three weeks ago. But I'll go now into the next sentence. And therefore, it is just that the mind of the philosopher only has wings, for he is always, so far as he is able, in communion through memory with those things, the giving of which causes God to be divine. Now, a man who employs such memories rightly is always being initiated into perfect mysteries. He alone becomes perfect. Mm -hmm. And the, now the whole question is, what does he have a memory of? Mm -hmm. And of course we could ask why the philosopher especially uh, can be described in this way. Because that goes to the symposium. And he has to, he can have memory, but he has to do it rightly too, right? Pardon me? I was just commenting that um, 
not only do you have to have memories, right, but employ them rightly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. This work is, of course, similar to the Tibetan Book of the Dead in respect that everyone, everyone has had their, this experience. If they're human, they've had this experience. If even for a brief moment. And they too play on the same game of memory. The whole game is, if you've had it, then what can bring you back to recall it? That is, what, to, what method of, of what method should, <coughs> pardon me, what method should you use? Because is he not saying there's something, if we want to get into relationships for the moment, which may be premature, but uh, he has, he has this, Model, doesn't it? Mm. That anyone you find beautiful and in love with, it really awakens this memory. And that memory goes back to this. And his whole goal in relationships is to say, hey, you know what? Don't try to convert this person to be like you or the other way around. The goal should be to try to bring this distance close through memory. Right? You're both focusing on that highest vision and therefore you're becoming, as it were, closer to the divine. But isn't that the whole model of love and the Phaedrus? Well, Brad, we get a couple of quotes to show that, does it not? Sure, but you have that, you have that, Usia. That's the Usia training too, yeah, right? Turning around, turning mm -hmm. to it. No, Yourself as well as the beloved, and yeah. with respect. And this also, this can be represented in twelve ways. Mm -hmm. right? Or predominantly given the different, as it were, types of the twelve gods, since all of the gods can reach it. But, uh, therefore, people who have a predisposition based upon modern terms, the psychological type of which they are members in his game, the particular theological image or similarity to astrology, to whatever class you belong into, it's best to find someone who's similar to, to your own member in your own class or you're going to have a problem in trying to make them like other than they are and they're other than you, and so the battle rages. Um, all my discourses so far have been about the fourth kind of madness, which causes him to be regarded as mad who, when he sees the beauty on earth, remembering the true beauty, feels his wings grow and longs to stretch them for an upward flight. Can't do so. But like a bird gazes upward and neglects the things below. My discourse has shown that this is, of all inspirations, the best, highest origin to him who has it and who shares in it. And that he who loves the beautiful, partaking in this madness, ah, call the lover, where it's been said, you know, that every soul of man has, by the law of nature, beheld the realities, otherwise it would never have entered into the human beings, the human form. But it's not easy for a soul to gain from earthly, re earthly things a recollection of that reality or those realities. Huh. And the difficulty it has is because it can be attributed to what? Can we... Could be attributed to what? Get in the text. Quick, get in the text. Get in the text. You'd be surprised. I know someone who read it. Now, here we are, 250. Injustice. The difficulty in beholding ju justice and temperance is because you can't see them with your eyes. 
the recollection of those realities is difficult to achieve for mm -hmm. us because after falling to earth, what happens? Oh, forgetfulness and wrongdoing. Un unright they were turned towards turning injustice the through evil, com through bad communications, through bad communications. And that the and the worst possible and therefore, evil in communication is in life's use of speech. Mm. That's interesting because right, it will turn you. That's what earlier, right? That's right. the most terrible speech. He has to put something over his head even to talk about the part that he left mm. out. And he feels he has to owe something to pay off such a dreadful thing that he did. Because he's finishing his speech, which in principle is absurd and benefits mm. no one, brings about the ruination of man. Which so, is what? That it's better to be involved with a non lover than a lover. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, yes absolutely. <clears throat> That's called bad communication. So what causes these evil communications? Well, in this dialogue, it looks like that Phaedrus was caught up in Lysias' speech, was he mm -hmm. not, in the relationship that Lysias was trying to involve in them? Mm -hmm. So what would you say it is if that's the case? If we can use this as an example. <coughs> um, just being like mesmerized. Oh. Oh. The, remember rhetoric, the last part, that may be filled with rhetoric. The person is swept away with the words, even though the words are hollow and shallow, they may in okay. fact have some effect. And Lysias wants him. Sure. Gee, are we back to those goddamn shadows again? The shadows. Goddamn shadows. I am again. sure glad you're back to shadows. <laughs> Can you point us which one you're into? Uh, I'm not know. in the shadows, but <laughs> I don't know. But somewhere in some text, there's this discussion about people thinking shadows are reality. I've noticed that. <laughs> I don't Republic. know where that is. One of the, at least in the Republic and the Phaedrus. All right. No. Yeah, keep going. And isn't there also, you know, the the idea that uh, the the reality that they're eating, and I've forgotten the word, is like a um, fake food, a false nourishment, you no. know, that as if we're eating nerd instead of ambrosia, and thinking it's, you know, ambrosia. Semblance, the semblance of nourishment, not the reality. Semblance is the word I think they use. I think you may be at uh, 250B. Yeah, just about. Right. But I'm so just saying. Look, see, see whether it fits. The, the issue there to me is them thinking with the semblance of nourishment, these ideas are of, you know, that nature, and they're not. Okay. Now, can you make make your point as strong as you can about the shadows? That people are enamored of a shadow instead of the reality. Yeah, and which don't is the point. Know it. Yes. Jack one was making. Yeah. Right. right, that's right. That's it. Yeah. Let me do it again. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all do it. Huh? Huh? Peer this through the glass uh, dimly. Well, I saw your hand go up. I, I was I, Listen, I had a girl in one of my classes that she had an itch. I made a switch like a, a, a and at, by the end of the semester, she was really intelligent because I kept calling on her every time she, later she said, you know, that's just a, I said, oh, but it won't make any difference. I'll call you every time you do it. So <laughs> after so much, she became one of the brightest girls, later became a monkey. A monk, excuse me. <laughs> There's a difference. Yes. Yeah, the Buddhist shrine, and, and hmm. they pay her money. Did she ever get over her? But she she shaved her head, therefore she looks like a monkey. <laughs> Did she get over the, sw the switch? Yeah. No, she still, yeah, she still, no. <laughs> yeah. Still saluting. 
Look, see if this fits, okay, the point you're making? Now, in the earthly copies of justice and temperance and the other ideas which are precious to souls, there's no light. But only a few approaching the images through the darkling organs of the sense behold in them the nature of that which they imitate. And these few did this with difficulty. Right? It's difficult. Right? To see earthly copies of justice and temper. Very difficult. Right? Well, that's right. But if you, is it you, if, is the object to recall the state? Yes. You have That's the method. So it's easy to do. But watch. Okay, recall it. <laughs> Passed. Very good. All right, but what is it, see? being permitted as initiates to the sight of perfect, simple, calm, happy apparitions, which we saw in the pure light. Right? This is a, was really my being pure light. He's saying, hey, you know what? It's just that. You see something you love, that wakes you up. That's a recognition of this. For whoever it is. Now comes the struggle. So it's part of it's part of recollecting it and being it, like if the uh, BMC in this section two fifty. No, no, being it. Like, oh, being it. Because being it, like if. Excuse me, I think that. Go ahead. Yeah, being in it. No, being it, like if you're seeing absolute justice and happiness, yeah. and you're supposed to be become the likeness of it then you have to be just and temperate. So the recollection is not not like a passive re recalling, but to be. No, you're recollecting yourself. Right, and in that recollection you can't, you're as like as possible to yeah. so what is recollected. Yeah, but then you're, then you're here. That's right, that's the achievement. Now the question is, why do you need things like temperance mm -hmm. to get there? Well, isn't one reason because one one of the, the realities that the truths that you see, some of the, the list includes justice and temperance. So if you're becoming like what you're recollecting or beholding, then you would become. Okay. Is it? Is it, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to answer you, so is it possible that if someone is anticipating this, they can act intemperately and lose it? Yeah. Can they rush towards it, it like they might rush in these kinds of relationships? If so, is it possible here in the realm of psychic experience that the same error could occur here and you lose the object? If so, then he's trying to bring attention to the dynamics of this to be applied here. Then he has a mysticism based upon love. Where he's saying, hey, the dynamics of one is the same as the other. They're not, they're not different. <coughs> and does this, uh, can we also put in here wisdom? Wisdom and beauty are two different words that describe the same thing. Is that correct? Let me make sure. 
louder, please? Yeah. Thank you. I don't follow. I, I missed that part. Sure. I missed that part. Oh, well, it's, I can get it for you. It's it, uh, D. 250D. <clears throat> And I think Barbara's new translation or Thomas Taylor or anything else you have would be helpful here to see. So much then in honor of memory. On account of which I have now spoken at some length. Through yearning for the joys of that other time, but beauty, <laughs> as I said before, shown in brilliance among those visions. And since we came to earth, we found it shining most clearly through the clearest of, the sense of our senses. For sight is the sharpest of the physical senses. Though wisdom is not seen by it, for wisdom would arouse terrible love if such a clear image of it were granted as would come through sight. And the same is true of the other lovely realities. But beauty alone has this privilege, and therefore it is most clearly seen and loveliest. So if wisdom could be seen with the human eye, it would arouse a terrible, terrible love. I thought, though, that what you were just saying was that wisdom was the same thing as beauty. That was what I was puzzled about. You thought what? I guess reason? I just I misheard then. I thought that what you were asking you, I thought you asked Jacqueline, is wisdom the same thing as beauty? No, no, I was asking whether knowledge is the same as wisdom. Oh, okay. And here, see if knowledge was connected with that experience, which is just beauty, is wisdom also connected with it? In other words, is that clear light of being? one could experience and find an astonishing experience of beauty. I say, hey, you know what, no matter what you can know, it doesn't make any difference. Nothing can be known like this can be known. Why is that a problem? See, the problem in knowledge um, is triune, isn't it? Right? Um, in, the, in the common world, it follows the analogy with sight, right? Sight, right? Eyes, the seer sees the scene. And no one would ever say that these are the same. Uh, fundamentally, they're different. So equally well, uh, in terms of knowing, the knower not goes through some process of knowing the known. Now, in the phenomenal world, everyday world, this is a problem because these are different. Right? Therefore, the knower is always different than the object known. Therefore, it's always strange and alien to them. But this kind of knowing, this kind of knowledge, doesn't follow that model. Because there's no difference in this experience. Well, oh wow, what a magnificent, hey, most brilliant light of being. Hey, it can really be known. Hey, you know what I know? That's the same as fundamentally, it's me. Because that's what he says, doesn't he? The whole thing is a study of Ursia. That's just, one comes to realize the nature of himself, that is the nature of the self, mm -hmm. as an experience of mind turning upon itself brilliantly, luminously, in a most brilliant light of uh, being, uh, radiantly shining of wisdom. That's knowing. I think this kind of knowing. There's no difference between the knower, knowing, the known. Right? Which is why it's, if you have nothing else to do, it's worth looking at. <laughs> Let me check. Brad? 
Sure. So, uh, you'd write that on a can of beer? Yeah. While you sip this and drink it with all of your heart. Remember, there's still something better yet to see. That's what every beer can has those. It's <laughs> in fine yeah. print. Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, in Brussels. That's the philosopher's warning, kind of like yeah, the surgeon in general. <laughs> Would you agree from this point on, 251, but he who, remember now, this is for a certain type of person, right? But he who is newly initiated, who beheld many other realities when he sees a godlike face or form, ah, which is a good image of beauty. It's a certain type, isn't it? Right, as you proceed into that quote. Mm -hmm. hmm. So how do you become newly initiated? Memory. That's how you become initiated. So the newly initiated are people who are turning into it and doing it. Hey, wait a minute. Rightly. We're all over time. No. <gasps> I'm shocked. Why didn't you warn us? I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Memory fails. <laughs> okay, shall we as assume you're now going through this section and we can come back now to the problem of Zeus and Aries from this point on next time we meet, okay? Okay. Because okay. it needs that 251 first. I'm pardon, 252. Thank you, thank you, fun. Thank you.